Even though creationism is fun to debunk, I think it's time to discuss the now equally popular idea, at least among U.S. adults, that God used evolution to create humans. At its core, this is a cleanup idea, one which was only adopted once people realized the Bible got it wrong. I can acknowledge that many modern Christians have found creative and even plausible ways to merge evolution with the Bible. But the fact remains that no one would read the Bible and conclude that humans evolved from ancient animals with God simply guiding the process. Nor would anyone look at the circuitous and inefficient history of evolution and conclude that a supreme being had anything to do with it. The marriage of these two ideas has no empirical support from either side, and in this video, I'd like to explain this from the perspective of our evolutionary history. The earliest evidence of life is about 3.5 billion years old, and it took at least another billion years for some of those organisms to band together to create the first multicellular life. Fast forward another 2 billion years or so, and we finally get to the first vertebrates living on land, about 375 million years ago. And that's when God decided to make humans, right? Nope. Giant lizards. God was really fond of giant lizards for a long time, long before the dinosaurs. Even so, just after the dinosaurs rose to dominance, many of the core mammalian traits like hair, specialized teeth, and primitive mammary glands were already established. Forty million years later, the first true mammals had evolved. And that's when God started turning them into humans, right? Nope. The dinosaurs continued to dominate for another 95 million years. But after the dinosaurs went extinct, we finally entered the age of mammals. Is it time for humans yet? Nope. God decided to make more strange monsters for another 56 million years, although, to his credit, he did at least think to invent the first primates around this time. Once he'd gotten all the other mammalian monsters out of his system around 10 million years ago, God finally decided to get to work, separating the human lineage from that of other apes. But even then, he didn't seem to have a very good grasp on what type of humans he wanted. There were many promising humanoid species, including Homo erectus, Homo denisova, and, most famously, the Neanderthals. Oddly enough, the Neanderthals seemed like prime contenders for the coveted spot of God's chosen species. They had language, buried their dead, and there is even some evidence of symbolic practices as well. But then Homo sapiens outcompeted them, either because God had finally made up his mind about which species he wanted, or because he decided to be hands-off in the final stages. Everyone loves a good spectator sport. Come to think of it, maybe that's why he was so angry in the Old Testament. His precious Neanderthals lost, and he had to settle for Homo sapiens. Now, maybe God's chosen species didn't have to be humans. Maybe he would have settled for any animal that was smart enough to have symbolic reasoning and technological progress. But if that's the case, then why weren't any of the previous animals good enough? Surely he could have picked a previous species and guided it in that direction. Certainly would have been a much less messy process than the one he ended up with. Plus, he could have gotten something really cool-looking, like this thing. You've got to admit, that's way cooler than the hairy potatoes he ended up with. Now that I think about it, I'd be pretty mad too if I thought I was getting this, but I actually got this. In any case, it should be apparent that this kind of circuitous, wasteful process full of dead ends and resets is not the kind of thing you would expect from a supreme being. No one would look at our evolutionary history and think that a supreme being was guiding it. Nor would anyone read the Bible and conclude that humans are descendant from ancient animals. And indeed, for most of its history, no one did. Now, I understand the accusation that critics of the Bible often read it too literally, and that they fail to consider how certain passages were clearly meant figuratively. E.g., God is not literally a rock. However, for most of its history, the biblical creation story was predominantly read literally, which seems to indicate that there is nothing about the stories themselves to suggest that they were ever meant to be allegorical. These stories only sound outlandish to us modern people because of what we now know about the world. The desire to interpret these stories allegorically, thus allowing God to use evolution to create humans, seems to simply be the product of Christians who couldn't admit the Bible got it wrong.